Hi guys! So I wanted to do something fun. If you couldn't tell, I love ranking things and putting a ridiculous amount of time and thought into ranking things, and then I love sharing those rankings in videos. I just ranked what animals I want to see most in Jurassic World Evolution 3, and so I wanted to take the time to rank all 122 species that we currently have in Jurassic World Evolution 2, because I've spent a good amount of time in this game, and I definitely have my favorites and my least favorites. Um, I was obviously inspired by Evolution Square's updated ranking video, and I thought, hey, how hard could this be? It's hard, guys, especially when your whole thing is being as precise as possible, and so you really, really put a lot of thought into if you like one video game dinosaur more than this other video game dinosaur. But I did it after so much deliberation and shifting things around, going back and forth, making an entire list, and then starting over from scratch. Um, I have finally finished my ranking, and I've put this video together for you to enjoy. There are going to be some controversial opinions in here, I think, but like I just said, this ranking is as authentic to my personal feelings as possible. I'll obviously explain why I've ranked certain species a certain way, but as a disclaimer, I am pretty much exclusively a sandbox player, so no factors from campaign or challenge mode are influencing me here like stats or space requirements. Paleo accuracy is something I do really value, but I'm not a stickler about it. I don't think you can be as a Jurassic Park fan. Um, above all else, I think I value if a species offers something unique and fills a specific niche in the roster really well. That and skins. Uh, skins are very, very important to me. I love me some vibrant colors. I'm going to be showing you guys some of my favorite skins for each species, and if they have any legacy skins, I'll include those too. Um, so taking all of that into consideration, I think it's time to rank every single species in Jurassic World Evolution 2. At the bottom, number 122, it's Deinonychus. I'll be so honest with you guys, I think this is the only species in this game that I actively dislike. Most of these bottom tier animals I feel pretty indifferent about, but I just straight up don't like this Deinonychus design and I never use it because to me this is not a Deinonychus. I get it. I understand they wanted to do something to differentiate this species from Velociraptor, but if you were going to massacre my boy like this, you should have just not included him in the first place. I'm so sorry. It's not even that horribly offensive. I will just always use a different small carnivore over Deinonychus. I never touch this species. Next is Plesiosaurus, and it does hurt me to put this species so low because it's the namesake of the Plesiosaurus, but it's just not impressive at all. It's tiny, it's got this snake mouth, which is kind of cute, but definitely not what I imagine when I think Plesiosaurus. Um, I think it has bad skins. I just think all of the other Plesiosaurs we have are better alternatives, and so I never use Plesiosaurus itself. It does have a very cute social animation, though. To me, Nodosaurus is pretty much just an Ankylosaurus without the club, which inherently makes it much less interesting. I only use this species every once in a blue moon. Um, it does have pretty vibrant skins, I just think it can be a struggle finding a skin combination that I really like. Polycanthus is in a very similar boat, but I do give it the edge over Nodosaurus because I think it's a bit more visually interesting. Um, I just find both of these species really forgettable. Hoyangosaurus is cute, but to me it's the most forgettable stegosaurid in the game, and there are better alternatives. I never use this species, and it was also a little weird for it to be part of the deluxe edition instead of the base game. Gigant Spinosaurus is very similar as another tiny stegosaurid that I think is pretty forgettable, but its really big shoulder spike gives it the edge over Hoyangosaurus, and it has some pretty good skins. Sauropods are inherently very cool, but Apatosaurus is easily the weakest in the roster. It's got nothing going on visually, its skins are bad, it's slow, <laughs> it is a film dinosaur, so there is that factor, but to sum Apatosaurus up in one word, it's just boring. Okay, the hardest group of dinosaurs for me to rank were the hybrids. They shifted all over the place, and sadly my least favorite is the Ankyloticus, but again I had such a hard time with the hybrids because I think all of them have fun designs, they have good skins, most of them benefit from having a lux pattern, so they're cool, but I just don't like hybrids and I never use them. 
adding them into a park feels like painting something pure, and so I never use the hybrids unless I'm building some sort of research facility. Like I said, Ankyloticus just happens to be my least favorite, but I will say its design is a massive improvement over how the species looked in Evolution 1. I think Mara Dactylus is just the most forgettable pterosaur we have. I like its sound design, but I'll almost always use a different species of pterosaur for my aviaries. People hate Myasaura, and I get it, but I guess I don't personally dislike this species as much as most people do, but I mean it's still in my bottom tier. Um, I just think Myasaura as a species is pretty noteworthy. It's the great mother lizard, so it's nice to have, and I like building sandy habitats for these guys with implied nests because, you know, that's their that's their whole thing. Um, they do look a little silly, and they're definitely the weakest hadrosaur in the game, though. Sintausaurus is a bit cooler because it's bipedal and has a colorful crest, but I think there are better hadrosaur alternatives, and so I don't use Sintau much. I think it's pretty forgettable. Corythosaurus is another hadrosaur that I don't use much because of better alternatives. It also has pretty bad skins, but I've given it the edge over Centausaurus because it's a film species, and I do have a lot of nostalgia for Jurassic Park 3. Corythosaurus caps off the D tier, so moving on to the bottom of C, we have our next hybrid, Stegoceratops. I can acknowledge that Stegoceratops is silly, but I think it looks cool because it has so much going on visually, and it has some really solid skins. But again, the hybrid problem automatically drags the species down quite a lot. Taurosaurus is probably the most forgettable ceratopsid. I just think the skins aren't great. There are much more interesting ceratopsids in the roster, but I do think it's a solid enough alternative for Triceratops when you want something similar but slightly different, plus nostalgia for Operation Genesis. Sauropelta isn't very noteworthy, but it's visually interesting. It kind of looks like an old man in an endearing way, and it makes some pretty funny noises. Mentally, I group this species with Nodosaurus and Polacanthus, and it's easily my favorite of the three. Barbarodactylus is fine, but it isn't particularly unique, and it would place higher if that was all, but no, in reality, Barbarodactylus is very weird and very unique with this really tall, forked crest, but for some reason when designing it for Evolution 2, they took away what makes it unique. They shrunk its crest, and they added these skin flaps that just make it look like a knockoff Pteranodon, I'm sorry. Barbarodactylus sits this low because of the missed opportunity here, and I hope we get a redesign in Evolution 3. Mementisaurus is cool as a really tall sauropod, but I don't think it offers anything unique compared to the others. It's just a skinnier Brachiosaurus. This is another case of missed opportunity because this is a film dinosaur, but while the evolution Mementi is very vertical, Mementi in the Lost World is much more horizontal. If it looked like its film version with a lower neck and a focus on length rather than height, Mementisaurus would probably place much higher for me. This is really the run of animals that I think are fine, but have this missed potential to be much better because next is Tylosaurus, a solid enough marine reptile and nice to have as an alternative for Mosasaurus, but why does it not use the shark feeder? I really think if Tylosaurus just had this one animation, it would automatically improve it quite a bit. Tapejara is a good pterosaur. It's colorful and weird looking and unique. But just for personal aesthetic reasons, I don't love its head shape, and so I don't use it much. I know that's kind of silly, but it's true, and I'm sorry to tap a jar. <laughs> Sierra Dactylus is another good pterosaur. It's nice to have, but when picking pterosaurs, I'll usually go for Pteranodon over this species. Tropiognathus offers something a bit more unique by being a larger pterosaur and having that distinct beak shape, but I still don't use it all that often. Mudaburosaurus is obviously very similar to the many hadrosaurs we have in the game, but it's a bit unique because it isn't actually a hadrosaur. It's an iguanodont, I believe, and it actually has some really good skins. Number 100 is Chasmosaurus, which is a good, smaller species to have for a bit of size variety in our ceratopsids. It has a pattern that uses the frill pretty well, which you'd think would be obvious for ceratopsid skins, but is sadly not. Next is Archaeornithomimus, which I actually think has great skins. It's just my least favorite of the Ornithomimids we have. Also, every time I look at it, I hear Bryce Dallas Howard saying that one line from Jurassic World. 
I think Spino Raptor was the most difficult hybrid for me to rank because I think it's really cool and I know this species in particular is well loved, but I just never use it because it's a hybrid. I think I could make the argument for it to be much higher or much lower, and I think both are valid, so I just wasn't sure where to put Spino Raptor, and this is where I settled. Next up is Pachycephalosaurus, and it saddens me to put it this low. I just don't like its skins, and even though it's an OG film species, it ends up being my least favorite of the Pachycephalosaurids that we have. Camarasaurus is solid, mid-sized sauropod variety with an actually interesting pattern. Um, I do have some personal beef with this species because in Operation Genesis, it was green, so I actually played through challenge mode exclusively to unlock the two green skins for this species, which was hell, but Camarasaurus simply needs to be green. Diplodocus isn't that noteworthy, but I like it because, like I was wishing with Momenchisaurus, it's a very horizontal species of sauropod, and so that alone gives it a lot of variety from the others. It isn't tall, it's just really long, which I like, it makes it unique. Metriacanthosaurus is cool, I like its skins, it has a really strong pattern, I just think it's the most forgettable of the medium carnivores, and I'll usually go for something else. In a very similar camp is Majungasaurus, which also has some really solid skins. Um, I've given it the edge over Metri because of its unique head shape, but again, I just don't usually gravitate toward these two when I want to use a medium-sized carnivore. The Indoraptor is cool. It's more of a monster than a dinosaur. It's got a Lux skin, and obviously it was a film species, which gives it some extra points, but even more so than the other hybrids, I'll never use it outside of a research facility. Scorpius Rex has the edge over Indoraptor because I think it's better as a monster. It leans further into that aspect of its design, and it has some surprisingly good skins. This is a hybrid I also just enjoy watching because it's so weird looking, but it's also very weird looking. Number 90 is Sungaripterus. The Sungaripterus? I'm not sure. Uh, which has grown on me a lot, even from just the first iteration of this ranking to now. Not very noteworthy, but I think it has solid skins, and I like its head shape. I think the curved beak is unique. I really like Sinoceratops in the movies, but for some reason the model in Evolution 2 just looks off to me. It's so wrinkly. It looks like an old man, but this time in a bad way, <laughs> and its, its pattern is kind of a joke. Still, it's chunky, and it's got the holes in its frill, which I like. Dracorex is forgettable as a species, but made it this high because it has some surprisingly great skin, so I use it more often than Pachycephalosaurus. Ichthyosaurus is another species that has good skin colors, but I struggle to find a combination that I really like. Still, it's good to have as a small lagoon animal because it's a great filler species in big lagoons with plesiosaurs and archelon. Um, I like to think of them as the aquarium fish mixed in with the sharks and sea turtles. I quite like Pentaceratops because it's such a weird looking ceratopsid. Um, it's like you took a Triceratops and just kind of stretched it vertically. It's got long legs, a tall frill, and good skins. Coelophysis is nice to have as a Triassic dinosaur, which is a rarity, but beyond that there isn't much to make it unique and I'll usually go for a different small carnivore. I don't know what it is about Baryonyx that I don't really like. I think it's a combination of lackluster skins and its proportions. I almost feel like its head is too big for its body. Um, I'm not sure, but I'll usually use Sucomimus instead. But obviously Baryonyx is a film dinosaur and it has three solid Camp Cretaceous skins. Another species that's really grown on me is Elasmosaurus. I used to think I didn't like this species because of its sea monster head, but I've honestly warmed up to it because it makes Elasmosaurus unique from the other plesiosaurs. Why am I so bothered by Deinonychus but not Elasmosaurus? My answer is, don't ask me questions like that. I think it's controversial to have Elasmosaurus this high, and I think it's controversial to have Mosasaurus this low. Obviously, it's been a treat in the movies. It's big, it's iconic, but it has some of the weakest skins in the game, and I just don't gravitate toward Mosasaurus because I'll always use a lagoon species that I find more interesting instead. Mosa feels like the basic pick. It's still a solid pick regardless. You can never go wrong with it. I just don't find it all that interesting in Evolution 2, so top of the C tier it goes. Kicking off the bottom of the B tier is Proceratosaurus, which is a good small carnivore with good skins and some deep cut lore connections. 
number 80 is Troodon, which has the edge over Proceratosaurus for slightly more vibrant skins and a unique quality in that it is venomous. This isn't something I see often being a sandbox player, but I do kind of like how you can give Troodon skins to make it look almost like a colorful poison dart frog. Another placement that I'm sure many of you will find silly next is Spinoceratops. Look, it's a goofy hybrid. I know that, but it has some of the best skins in the whole game. It is so colorful. I love its lux pattern, and watching a ceratopsid eat from the fish feeder is so charming to me. Plus, it has the Camp Cretaceous skins, and I just have a soft spot for this hybrid, even though I hated it in Camp Cretaceous, and I wasn't that excited to get it in Evolution 2. As a hybrid, I almost never use it, which is why it's down here, but I still think it might deserve to be higher on my list. I just couldn't in good conscience put Spinoceratops over the Indominus Rex. The Indominus is the hybrid, obviously a must-have for any research facility, perfect for high security builds. It has solid skins, a Lux skin, the fact it can camouflage is cool. I'm repeating myself a lot, but again, as a hybrid, I just don't use it all that much, but I will hesitantly say it's the best hybrid in the game. I mentioned early on that there are better alternatives for tiny stegosaurids, and I was mostly talking about Chungkingosaurus. Even though this isn't a very noteworthy species, I think it's super cute, I like its skins, and when I need a tiny stegosaurid, I'm gonna grab this guy. Chiangjusaurus is a cool species whose name I still struggle to pronounce, um, and I really like having it in the game, I just haven't fallen in love with it as much as some other people have, but I do really like its design and it's still a great pick for a medium carnivore. I prefer Cryolophosaurus ever so slightly more because it has the colorful crest and it's a dinosaur from Antarctica, which I think is really neat, um, but I do kind of wish it was a bit bulkier. And then just above those two, we have Megalosaurus, which I think is a pretty underrated species in Evolution 2. It has surprisingly good skins and some really cool history attached to it being the first dinosaur ever discovered, so I like using it. Another placement that's probably controversial next is Leoporodon. I think I'm in the minority in liking this design. It feels very Jurassic World to me, and I'm okay with that. I like it. Um, I like its proportions. It has pretty weak skins, and I do wish it was bigger, but I genuinely like this species, and I think it's fun. Um, I don't take screenshots often, but I got a really great shot of the species that I want to share with you. Carcharodontosaurus is a good large carnivore. I think it has good skins, good sound design, and I like that it looks very slender and narrow despite its size, which makes it unique compared to the others. I think Crichtonsaurus is possibly the cutest dinosaur in the game. I love this species. I think it's good for petting zoos, which are something that I like to build, but its skins are only fine, and there's a better tiny ankylosaurid in the game. Number 70 is Styracosaurus. You can never go wrong with this species. It has such a cool frill, it's good for size variety, and it has solid skins, but like most ceratopsids in this game, I wish the pattern utilized the frill a bit more. I really like Geosternbergia. It's obviously similar to Pteranodon, but still different enough. Um, like Sungaricterus, I really like the slightly curved beak, and it has good skins that actually utilize its crest. Struthiomimus is an evolution classic with good skins and a lot of personality. Um, it's great as a filler species, but there is a third ornithomimid that I like a bit more. Ceratosaurus will always be cool. Again, I have a lot of nostalgia for Jurassic Park 3, so I love this species. It has great skin colors, but for me, only the Rana pattern is really worth using. Nigersaurus is a very unique species with a fun design. It offers some great variety being a small species of sauropod, uh, and it has surprisingly great skins for a sauropod, which tend to be pretty dull, as I've said. Dilophosaurus is iconic in this franchise and is of course super unique because it has that frill. As a little aside, I wish the Jurassic franchise pulled a Dilophosaurus more often and gave its dinosaurs these really unique physical traits that we wouldn't know from paleontology alone. The gimmick of Dilophosaurus, right, is that its frill and its spitting aren't something that would be fossilized, so you wouldn't know it had these qualities until you cloned one. I've always loved that concept, and I feel like the franchise only did that once and then never really touched it again. They sort of did with Troodon being venomous, but that's pretty much it. Um, I'd love to see more Dilophosaurus level creativity 
in this franchise. Anyway, in Evolution 2, it has good skins, and I love the Dominion skin we got for it, um, but I do wish it used its frill a bit more, and for whatever reason, even though I love Dilophosaurus, when playing I tend to gravitate toward other small carnivores. I think it's almost, it almost feels like an odd one out at times because of that gimmick that I just explained. Attenborosaurus is basically just the better Plesiosaurus, and it's better by a mile. The skins are only fine, but I think it has a great design, it looks fantastic, and it also has my favorite sound design in the whole game. Its cries and bellows are so haunting, I absolutely love listening to these guys as they swim around my lagoons. Amargosaurus is very similar to Nigersaurus as our other small sauropod, but I like it just a bit more because its neck spikes and really long tail give it a much stronger silhouette. Um, this was a great addition to the base roster. Chronosaurus is really cool to have as a species of smaller mosasaur. Hello, editing Sean here. Chronosaurus is not a mosasaur, it is a pliosaur. It's, it's a relative of Leopleridon, so uh, sorry carrying on. <laughs> it has great skins and with its smiley face and fun shark feeding animation, this is a species with a lot of personality which is wonderful to see. Building for itty bitty dinosaurs is a pain in this game, but something I still really enjoy doing despite the challenge, and Moros Intrepidus is a great tiny dinosaur with a wonderful design. It's fluffy, it has colorful skins, even if I kind of struggle to find a strong combination, um, its dominion skin is my go-to. It does suffer from something all tiny dinosaurs do, and that's how they can easily get lost in a park, even in just an average sized habitat. You really have to build tiny for these guys if you want to spotlight them. They get lost in grass and basically disappear if you zoom out even just a bit. At number 60 with the edge over Moros Intrepidus is Compsognathus for its iconic factor, and I love how they constantly hop around, it makes the species extra endearing. I like tossing these guys in as supplemental species into large carnivore habitats because I like to think they're too small to be worth hunting. Triceratops is a really tricky species that I have a lot to say about because it's obviously one of the most iconic dinosaurs, but the model in Evolution 2 is really wrinkly and it doesn't have good skins and I never use it because I exclusively use the Jurassic Park model since it's so much better. The textures, the coloration, it has life in its eyes whereas the normal trike looks like it's about to wither away. I love the 93 Triceratops skin so much but that's it, it's just a skin. Why is it not a variant? They made the 2001 Brachy a variant, the 97 Stego a variant, the 2001 Pteranodon a variant, so it literally feels like they just forgot to make the 93 Triceratops a variant before support for the game ended, and I will forever be upset about that because if the Jurassic Park model had its own skins on par with these other classic variants, it would probably be an S tier species, but Right now, all of my Triceratops look exactly the same because I only use one skin for the species, but it is a fantastic skin. Werasaurus is such a good stegosaurid, the round plates instantly make it unique, and it has great skins. Love this species. And then capping off the B tier is Suchomimus. Like I said, I'll usually use this species over Baryonyx because it has really good skins, a strong pattern, it has this cool, very narrow snout, and I really like the noises that it makes. We have made it to the A tier, and I think this is a good point to say that in case you haven't noticed yet. I like most of the species in this game, and even though I'm pointing out their flaws when I talk about them, it's really just a case of me feeling more passionate about how much I like these species as we climb higher and higher. So at the bottom of A tier is Carnotaurus, which is one of my personal favorite dinosaurs outside of Jurassic. In the game, Carnotaurus has good skin colors, although I think the Rana pattern is really the only one worth using, but it has two good legacy skins, which are nice to have. Homolocephaly is a fan favorite, and I love having it, especially for petting zoo builds. It's super cute and has vibrant skins, but I do struggle to find combinations that I really like. Gallimimus is obviously my favorite of the three Ornithomimids we have because it's the only film species, it's the largest, and it's one of my go-to filler species in large herbivore habitats. The skins are good, but I especially like using the 93 skin with the white stripes. Dryosaurus, though, is my favorite dinosaur to use as a filler species, 
and it's also great for petting zoos. It's the best of both worlds between homolocephaly and gallimimus. It has great skins and also makes really cute sounds that I enjoy very much. Um, and it's unique because I don't believe we have any other dinosaurs in the game that are part of the same family as Dryosaurus. Aloro Titan is an awesome hadrosaur to have because of its sheer size. It's big, it's bipedal, um, I love using it, and it has good skins. Acrocanthosaurus could maybe be a bit more visually unique from the other large carnivores, but I love this species because it's so big and chunky, and it has really colorful skins. Number 50 is Nasudoceratops. I love the shape of the ceratopsid. The bull horns are really what make it unique. It's a film species, but one that hasn't been utilized very much, so it still feels fresh. Um, it has good skins, and I love its social animation where it gnaws on the other one's horn. Stiggy Moloch is easily my favorite Pachycephalosaurid that we have. It's my go-to because even if the skins are only solid, I love its design so much and how much detail the model has around the head. Euoplocephalus has such a good ankylosaurid design, and while most of the ankylosaurids suffer from lackluster skins, Euoplocephalus is the exception. I really like this species. I do still prefer Ankylosaurus by just a smidge for its bulky size and for being such a notable movie dinosaur, even if its skins are weak, like I just said, but it also has two really strong legacy skins that I enjoy using. One of my favorite ceratopsids in the game is Pachyrhinosaurus because it has great skins and its pattern actually utilizes the frill pretty well. It also offers some good variety by being a smaller species and also not having horns on its face like the other ceratopsids do. Albertosaurus is a lovely species that I enjoy using with a good design and great skins and it's nice to have as a smaller tyrannosaur. I think Minmi is the best ankylosaurid in the game as a small species that's perfect for petting zoos. It doesn't have a tail club like, say, Crichtonsaurus, but it makes up for that in great skins and a bit of personality. We have finally reached the variants with Oranosaurus. I rambled on about how much I wish we had a Triceratops variant because variants are awesome. It's basically two species for the price of one slot in the roster, and I enjoy the diversity that variants can offer. Oranosaurus is one where I do like both body variants that we have, and I'll use one or the other depending on the build. I do actually prefer the standard Oranosaurus, um, which I really like because as a species often depicted with a sail, I think it's cool they interpreted it as a hump instead. It makes this design feel really bulky, which I like. Um, but for a more traditional looking design, we have the smaller Camp Cretaceous variant with a skin from the show, although the other skins could be better. Iguanodon, on the other hand, is a species where I really only use one of the body variants, and that is of course the Frontier design. I love its sheer size, its really big hands, um, and it has nice skins, I like the stripes. I do not gravitate toward the Dominion variant because I think most of the skins are pretty ugly, especially the Dominion skin itself. I think it looks like a zombie with its really sunken in cheeks. It it looks like a corpse. I'm so sorry. Still, I've given Iguanodon the edge over Oranosaurus because I like the standard body variant so much and I love using it. Dimorphodon is another species where I really enjoy using both body variants. The standard design is fine. It's nice to have as a smaller species of pterosaur, but I love the Dominion variant because it's so tiny, it's fluffy, and Frontier gave it great skins. I'm not very big on pretending in this game and using one species as the baby for another species. I don't do that, but the two Dimorphodon variants are literally perfect for this, and I love using both in one aviary because it genuinely does look like the Dominion variants are babies. It's the most realistic combination to do this with, and I suggest combining the two if you haven't before. For number 40, I gave Pteranodon the edge over Dimorphodon because even though I never use the standard variant, I think it's kind of ugly and it has weak skins. I love the Jurassic Park variant and I use it all the time. This is probably my Jurassic Park 3 nostalgia shining through again, but I prefer this model so much and I think Frontier gave it some really great skins. With all of these variants, I am taking into account that even if I don't like one of the variants that we have, we still have a second entirely different version of the same species and that automatically gives these guys some bonus points. I think the variant system was a very smart solution for getting multiple designs for one species in the game. 
Moving on from variants for a bit, next up is Herrera Saurus. I love this small carnivore. It feels really unique because I believe it has its own rig. Um, it's also a Triassic dinosaur, which is a plus, and its pattern can feel a little muddled, but overall I like it, and I love using this species. Thanatos Dracon has been a wonderful addition to the Pterosaur roster with good skins, and I just love having a still large but more reasonably sized as Darkid. Plus, it just looks great. It feels like the most paleo accurate pterosaur that we've gotten. Atrociraptor is one of the least paleo accurate species we have, but I still think it's a great, feisty alternative to Velociraptor. I love the extra bulk it has, and I think it has great skins the colors, the patterning, and for awesome legacy skins as well. Concavenator has such a cool design, such a strong silhouette, which I value, and some great skins. I really need to use it more. It's a species that still feels really fresh and exciting to have in the game. Microceratus was tough to rank because it's one of the smallest species we have, and I feel like it gets lost in a habitat even more so than, say, Compsognathus, but the skins are just so gorgeous. I love how colorful it is, and I really like its two Dominion skins as well. It feels weird calling this the best Ceratopsid in the game, but according to my ranking, that's how I feel. The standard Kentrosaurus is fine. When I need a small Stegosaurus, I'll usually go for Chunkingosaurus, like I said. And so obviously the reason Kentrosaurus has ranked this high is because of the Camp Cretaceous variant. I like its design more, it's bulkier, it has really good skins, plus the Pierce skin, which I love to use. And then right above Kentrosaurus, we have Stegosaurus. It's just more iconic, and the standard variant is solid. It has some nice skins. Obviously, though, the 97 variant is vastly superior and has some of the best herbivore skins in the game. I never use the Jurassic World variant. I always go for the Jurassic Park version. Stegosaurus is definitely the best Stegosaurus that we have in the game. As much as I love a well-designed herbivore, I'm much more of a carnivore guy, and that will become increasingly obvious the higher that we get on my list. Next up, I've put Segisaurus, which I'll admit is a pretty forgettable species, but I love it in Evolution 2 because it has great skins, I love how colorful they made it, and it fills a really specific size niche I didn't know I needed filled. It's smaller than Coelophysis, but still bigger than Compsognathus, so even more than the Compies, I love using Segisaurus as a supplementary tiny carnivore alongside my larger carnivores. It doesn't get as lost in the grass as super tiny species do. Lystrosaurus is still my main go-to tiny species because I find these guys really endearing, and as a Therapsid, it's unique compared to pretty much everything else in the game. This species kind of reminds me of a bulldog, and I think they're cute. Um, the skins are solid enough, I usually just use the Dominion skin. Lystrosaurus does have some company in the roster through the Synapsid Dimetrodon at number 30. Unique for the same reasons, but just a bit cooler. I love the silhouette the big sail gives this species, and I love having such a short and stocky carnivore. It has good skins, but again, I usually just go for the Dominion one, and this species also has one of my favorite social animations. My Jurassic Park 3 nostalgia wouldn't let me put Spinosaurus any lower, even though this design is now very outdated um, paleontologically, and it doesn't have particularly great skins. They're fine, but I'll always have a soft spot for the Jurassic Park Spinosaurus. I love the way it sounds and moves, and I'll usually toss one into my parks. Even though Segisaurus is my go-to supplemental carnivore, as I've been calling them, the design of Sinoceropteryx is just so good, and it has great skins. They're really cute with a cute social animation, and I try to find somewhere to put them when I can. I'll mention here I also like putting these tiny carnivore species in my large herbivore habitats, because what are these little ankle biters going to do, right? They just help fill out a herbivore habitat and add some more diversity. My go-to plesiosaur is easily Styxosaurus, which I think has some of the best skins in the game. Even without the Lux Factor, you can make these guys so vibrant with some really great contrast. The fact it glows in the dark just makes it even cooler. It has a unique silhouette, and it's bigger than something like Attenborosaurus, so I love using this species. Gigantoraptor has so much personality, I think it's been a wonderful addition to the game. The design is great, its feathers look awesome, I just wish we could go even more vibrant with the colors. Only a couple skin combinations really pop, like how I love my feathered species to pop, but this species is still super unique, and I love it. Allosaurus made it this high because it has two body variants, and I actually love both of them. I really just gravitate toward one depending on my mood, or the type of park that I'm building. 
the Frontier design is more tame and has good skins, and then the Dominion design is more monstrous, but really cool and I think has even better skins, plus the Dominion skin itself. Alamosaurus is one of my go-to sauropods because it's so big. It has a wonderful design with more visual interest than you get with any of the other sauropods, and it has good skins. Parasaurolophus is the hadrosaur of many skins because it has a lot of legacy skins, and they're all great, not to mention its normal ones, which are also really good. It's a movie classic, which is why it has so many movie skins. Um, I love using the 97 skin, the Camp Cretaceous Lux skins are really fun to have, and the Dominion skins are awesome. I do wish they were their own full-blown variant, but we got three skins with this one model, so I'll let it slide this time. So much diversity in just one species. Just edging it out, though, is my favorite hadrosaur in the game, Edmontosaurus. What Parasaurolophus has in movie skins, Edmontosaurus has in its normal skins, which are some of the most colorful in the game. I love the pattern on Edmontosaurus because of the sheer contrast between the head and the rest of the body. It really makes the species pop visually. Plus, it's really big, so I enjoy using it for that reason, too. Love Edmontosaurus. It's capping off the A tier. Is it silly for me to put 21 species in S tier? Maybe, but I had to. There are just so there there's just that many fantastic animals in this game. And my least favorite of the best is Velociraptor. This species is carried by its legacy skins, all of which are gorgeous, especially the Lost World Tiger Raptors. I'm obsessed with how they look. The normal skins are weak, but this species is Jurassic Royalty. It's iconic. Being honest with you guys though, in a game where I'm valuing paleo accuracy more and more, I tend to gravitate toward other small carnivores and even other raptors, which is why Velociraptor is just missing out on the top 20. Kicking us off is Dunkleosteus, which I think shows you just how much of a banger I think the prehistoric marine species pack was since they're all in S tier. The dunk is super unique as this ancient species of big fish. It's the oldest animal we have in the game and it stands out in a beautiful way. They have a lot of personality with the shark feeding animation and the social animation where one nips at the other one's tail. I love the dunk. Next up is the big bird, Quetzalcoatlus. It's humongous, it's beautiful, it has wonderful skins. The only reason the cats hasn't placed even higher is because it does feel a bit cramped in the aviaries and it's really a shame that it doesn't walk. It's silly to watch this thing have to fly everywhere, especially in such a limited space, um, which is why it looks so much better free flying outside of an aviary. But again, I wish it walked. Nothosaurus is next up and I think I'm in the minority with how much I love this species. It's super unique because it's our only lagoon animal with actual legs. So I love using them and watching them walk and sit on the rock platform. I like its teeth, I like its sound design, I like how it reminds me of an otter with the way it moves, especially its social animation where they twirl around each other. Its skins are very vibrant, um, it can be a challenge finding a combination that works really well, but when you do, the species will really pop, um, and obviously the Lux skins are a huge bonus. I think Nothosaurus is underrated. Still just edging it out is Shonisaurus, which is one of the most vibrant animals in the game. The skins on this thing are insane. Aside from that, it's really cool to have such a big lagoon species that isn't a full-blown predator. Um, obviously, Shonisaurus still eats fish, but what I mean is it's not going to hunt your other lagoon species. It's kind of a gentle giant and a very colorful one as well. Love it. I was not excited for Targosaurus to come into Evolution 2 because I don't love the Camp Cretaceous design. I think it's uninspired, and yet here it is at number 16. This species has such great skins, with the Camp Cretaceous one even growing on me. Its noises are really cool, it has a lot of personality with the way it rolls around. Tarbosaurus really just feels like such a fresh alternative to T-Rex, and so I love using it. Number 15 is Archelon. Again, so unique compared to any of the other lagoon species. It's so cool to have a giant sea turtle, and they gave it great skins. It's really colorful. Like I said earlier, I love making lagoon aquariums with Ichthyosaurus as the fish, a plesiosaur as the sharks or the eels, and you always have to have at least one sea turtle to punctuate a lagoon like that. This is another really endearing species to me. I love watching them slowly heave themselves up onto the rock platform. I explained in my last video that I love using a giant sauropod in my really big herbivore habitats for some dynamic height variation. That's why I want Argentinosaurus, but for now, 
we're stuck with Dreadnoughtus. This is another species with two variants, and the original is fine, um, but I never use it. I only use the Dominion variant because it's bigger, it's longer, it looks more detailed, and it has great skins for a sauropod. It really does come down to the sheer size of Dreadnoughtus that I really value. Just edging it out is Brachiosaurus because I like both variants and it's the OG sauropod. The standard Brachy is good, the skins are fine, I like the 93 skin, but the 2001 variant is really where it's at. Um, the skins on this model are even more vibrant than Dreadnoughtus and should really set the standard for sauropod skins going forward. And all skins, honestly, the 2001 Brachy is beautiful. Kind of like Allosaurus, I use both variants depending on my mood, but you could also use both in one habitat to suggest some sexual dimorphism. I think Brachiosaurus would be the best species to use for that. You may think it's silly, but my favorite pterosaur in this game is J. Helopterus, and that's because I think these guys are super cute, super unique, and super versatile. They're insectivores, we literally got an entirely unique feeder just for these guys, and because they're so tiny, I love using J. Helopterus as a filler species in mixed aviaries, but also in my petting zoos or just free flying around my entire park. They're perfect to use as an ambient species, kind of like sparrows or butterflies, and it helps that they have such great skins that can make them resemble different species of butterflies. My favorite skin is reminiscent of a monarch. They're fuzzy, I love their little ear tufts, they look more like a bat than they look like any other pterosaur we have in the game. I just love J. Helopterus, and I think people write them off for how tiny they are when they're actually a very useful species. Just missing out on the top 10, I don't know if this is controversial, but we have Tyrannosaurus Rex as the icon of the franchise. T-Rex has so many great legacy skins, which are really the main reason it's placed so high. Obviously though, it's also just the most iconic dinosaur, and I love hearing its iconic roar. You can never go wrong with T-Rex, but in a game with so many other large carnivores, I'll usually go for a more interesting pick. We have made it to the top 10 and just edging out T-Rex is its feathery cousin, Eutyrannus. I think Eutyrannus has one of the best designs in the whole game. It's absolutely gorgeous and it has really strong skins to match. Number 9 is Oviraptor, a lovely little omnivore that I love adding to herbivore enclosures and of course petting zoos, um, they make the perfect chickens. Uh, Oviraptor has a unique look to it, but the main reason it plays so high is because its skins are gorgeous. This is a species where you can randomize the skins and pretty much every combination you get will be amazing. Number 8 is my favorite lagoon species. It shouldn't really come as a surprise that it's Megalodon. We all wanted this big shark for so long, we finally got it, and it's beautiful. The skins are great, the shark feeding animation is awesome, but it's really up this high because it's so unique compared to any other marine species we have. We only have one other fish, and while the dunk is chronologically the earliest species that we have, the Megalodon is the latest species that we have, being the only animal in the game from the Cenozoic period. Super unique. Number seven is Therizinosaurus, because this species will always be awesome. It's unique from everything else for obvious reasons, and it's cool to have such a badass herbivore. I love its drinking animation, where it sinks its claws into the ground to anchor it. Um, it didn't place even higher because its skins are only fine. They're vibrant, but finding a good combination is hard. Um, I usually just go with the Dominion skin. Uh, and then ever since Dominion, Frontier has spoiled us with some beautiful, fully feathered designs, and so even though Therizinosaurus has feathers, it feels a bit naked in comparison to some of the newer additions to the game. Also coming from Dominion at number 6 is Giganotosaurus. The standard variant is fine, I never use it, but the Dominion variant for the Giganotosaurus has the best skins out of any large carnivore in the game, in my opinion. The design for the Giga in Dominion is very monstrous, and it's nice to have that skin, but the patterning that Frontier came up with and the vibrant colors they gave the species are amazing and downplay that very movie monster design. This is my go-to large carnivore because I could stare at these skins for hours. I doubt most people would put Australovenator at number 5, um, even I'm having doubts, but the skins on this species absolutely blow me away. I don't know who at Frontier made the decision to go full rainbow with Australovenator, but thank you because this species is a delight to randomize and just admire what pops out of the hatchery. Um, I also think they have a good design, they're fun to watch, but the skins are absolutely why this species ranked so high. Number 4 is 
Utah Raptor with another one of the best designs in the entire game. It is so nice to finally have such a paleo-accurate dromaeosaurid. The Utah Raptor is beautiful, and it's cool that it has a little extra size to it compared to the others. The only reason it's not even higher is because personally, I think they could have gone even harder with the skins. They're great, but they don't pop quite like some of my other favorites do. Um, it's Utah Raptor's amazing design that really carries this species. You may think it's ridiculous that I put Monolophosaurus at number three, but I don't care. This is my list, and I love Monolophosaurus. Um, I'm its biggest champion. They were cool in Camp Cretaceous, and that skin is fine, I guess, but the skins Frontier gave this species, oh my god. I could literally just have the Rana pattern, and I think Monolophosaurus would still place this high because that's what I use 80% of the time anyway. The splash of color on this species face always has me in awe. The amazing skins have made Monolophosaurus my go-to small carnivore. I can't build a park without them. They don't even offer much else. I just think the skins look so good paired with their design. Frontier outdid themselves, taking a design from the franchise and giving it a fresh coat of paint. Although even though Monolophosaurus is my go-to small carnivore, I cannot give the silver medal to anyone other than Pyroraptor. I'm going to sound like a broken record, but the skins, oh my god. Pyroraptor edges out Monolofo because it's even more vibrant. This is another species where I enjoy just randomizing the skins and seeing what pops out. Um, and it has feathers, which make for some great animations and a little extra personality. The Dominion skin is cool, but its naked face does stick out like a sore thumb. This design inherently isn't as good as Utah Raptors, but... Then, just like Giganotosaurus, Frontier went in and added this patterning to the face that hides that aspect of its design and makes Pyroraptor something truly beautiful. One species left, have you been keeping track? Number one, my favorite dinosaur in the entire game is Dinochirus. It's sort of like Therizinosaurus, but even better. It's chunky, it's an omnivore, so it eats plants and fish, it's fully feathered, the design looks beautiful, the skins are great, it's visually unique, it has one of my favorite social animations in the game. Dinochirus really has it all, and it had to be my number one. I love this species so dearly, and they really did it justice. And with that, we have my final ranking of all 122 species in Jurassic World Evolution 2. I won't keep you guys any longer because this video is already ridiculously long enough, but thank you if you've watched all the way to the end. It means a lot to me. I put way more work in the, into this video than I thought I would, but it was fun to make. Um, I'll see you guys next time, probably for another video on Planet Zoo. Thanks again for watching. Bye, guys.